Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell and in today's video we're going to continue looking at our types of businesses and more specifically companies. So before we get into the two types of companies in our study design, we're going to look at what a company is and it's a business that has gone through the process of incorporation. So there's a little more involved in establishing a company than with a sole trader and partnership because of this incorporation process. So incorporation refers to the process of actually forming a company which is now a separate legal entity to that of its owners. So the owners of a company purchase shares in that company and as a result, they're known as shareholders. You'll see that term quite often when we're talking about companies, you'll see the term shareholders rather than owners. So a share of the company, which the owner purchases, represents a unit of ownership in that company. And so the number of shares that they own simply represents the proportion of ownership they have in that company. Now it could be that there's only one owner in a company and therefore they would own all of the shares, or the owner may only have a few shares in the company and therefore only has a really small portion of ownership of the company. So this raises the, often raises the question I find of how many shares are available in each company. And so that those that establish the company d decide this, it can be different in every, to every company that exists. So they may decide that there's only going to be 100 shares available. They may decide that there's going to be a million shares available. It really just depends on how they want to structure and how many owners they want to have um, and how they want to raise capital. So as I mentioned, companies have a separate legal entity to the owners or the shareholders. So this means that the company can enter into contracts, for example, with suppliers to purchase property or take on debt from a bank. Um, the company can sue or be sued as well as own assets. So once incorporated, the company's there considered a separate legal entity and therefore the owners have limited liability, meaning that the shareholders are only liable for the company's debts to the extent of their investment. So let's take a look at an example of limited liability. Now, if we go back to our example of the cafe, we've got our owner represented on the right here, and we've got our cafe or the business or what we now know as a company represented on the left. So in the previous video, they were the same legal entity, but now because of the process of incorporation, they are separate legal entities. And because of that, the owner or owners of this cafe have a limited liability, meaning that they are only financially responsible for the debts of the company up to the amount of their investment. So again, let's say this company wants to grow and expand and so it's gone to the bank to get a loan and it's taken out some debt there and it also owes its suppliers some money because it's operating on 30 or 60 day accounts. And so if things do go bad and this company cannot pay off its debts, it means that the owner is not personally responsible for those debts. It's the company's responsibility to pay off those debts. Now, no doubt that the owner here would have invested some money to, to establish this company, um, had to purchase shares in the company that it established. So let's say they invested $10,000, but there's still $100,000 worth of debt owing. Well, while this owner will lose that $10,000 investment because that's been used in the company and to pay off debts, they are not personally responsible for the remaining debt. That is the company's responsibility. And that is one of the great benefits of owning a company, which is limited liability, because the limited liability provides a degree of protection for shareholders. It limits the financial risk somewhat um, from the personal assets being used to pay off any debts of the company. Now, our first type of company that's in our study design is called a private limited company, and that's an incorporated business that's owned by between one and 50 people. So one and 50 uh, shareholders. Private limited company needs to have at least one director, and that director is the senior manager that really makes the decisions. There can be more than one director, but it has to have at least one director, makes the decisions on behalf of the shareholders. And often the director is one of the main shareholders within the company as well, or the directors are often, you know, really uh, hold a large portion of the company. Now, with a private limited company, the shares cannot be freely sold or traded to members of the public. So you, if you own a company, you can't just go and sell your shares to anyone. And same deal, if you don't own a private limited company, you can't just go and say, all right, I want to own a part of the Cotton On Group or Visi Industries or anything like that. What you need to do is you would need to be approved by all the other shareholders that you're going to invest in that company. And they would obviously use that investment to, you know, invest in the in the business in terms of growing and expanding the business. You'll see that pr uh, private limited companies have the, the letters PTY LTD, that stands for proprietary limited. So they have those at the end of their business name. Um, and so remember that, you know, it's they're limited by shares, meaning they have a limited liability like all companies do. 
Now, one of the benefits of a private limited company is that like all companies that has limited liability and the shareholders have that real personal asset protection, it's also a greater ability to raise capital where the shareholders can decide to issue more shares to attract other investors. And because of the limited liability, ability, there, there can be a greater potential to attract that investment. There can also be tax benefits depending on the amount of profit the company is generating. Companies pay that company tax rate rather than the income tax rate. So if they're making significant profits, there can be some tax benefits there. Another benefit is that the company can live longer than the directors and the owners. So because of that separate legal entity, the, the company continues to exist you know, as long as it can remain financially stable. And that's not the case with sole traders and partnerships. And finally, there's a greater ability to maintain control over who owns the company. So the shareholders need to approve any owners and therefore there's less chance of a takeover and the like. However, a private limited company is more complex and more expensive to establish because of that need to go through the process of incorporation. There also needs to be more reporting requirements compared to the sole trader and partnership structures. Now, they don't need to be made uh, public knowledge, those reports, but there is more reporting requirements. And also another disadvantage can be that the shares cannot be freely traded. Now, that can be seen as a benefit because it allows more control over who owns the company, but it means it's not as easy to raise large amounts of capital like the public listed companies can. It also results in less liquidity for current shareholders, meaning that it's more difficult for them to sell their shares because they would need the approval of, or the new owner would need the approval of the current shareholders, which can make it more challenging. Next, we have a public listed company, which is an incorporated business that's owned by a minimum of one person and is listed on a public exchange such as the ASX. Now, in all honesty, it's incredibly rare for a public company to only have one owner. Quite often, they'll have thousands of owners, but legally, they only require one owner and all of the owners have limited liability, just like every other company. Now, the key to these companies is that their shares are available to trade on a public exchange. So anyone who wants to purchase shares in the company can do so by simply using a broker to purchase or sell their shares in the company. And therefore, they can get ownership whenever they choose to. Now, when a company first decides to list on a public exchange, such as the ASX or the Australian Securities Exchange, it offers its shares to the public to purchase for the first time, and that is called an initial public offering or what you might see as an IPO. So the company then uses the capital generated by selling shares or you know selling part ownership in the company to use within the business to hopefully grow the profits of the company over time. And because the public is able to purchase shares in these companies at any time, there are really tough regulations and the companies are required to notify the public of their performance as well as anything that may impact their performance in the future. So that, you know, that way all investors are aware of how the company is performing. And as you can see there, I've got an example of a public listed company of the Coles Group, which is one of Australia's largest and well-known public listed companies. Now, once again, the limited liability is a benefit along with a greater ability to raise capital. But the ability to raise capital is even greater than a private limited company because now anyone from the public can invest their money into the company to take part ownership. There is also the perpetuity as the company can live past its owners and there is now greater liquidity for shareholders as they can offer their shares for sale on an exchange at any time, making it far easier for them to sell their ownership in the company if they choose to do so. However, the complexity and expense of starting a public listed company is at an even higher level than what we saw with a private limited company. And there's even greater reporting and compliance requirements as well. So with a public listed company, the owners along with the public need to be notified of the financial performance along with anything that may impact the value of the company. And because the shares can be freely traded, there's no control over who owns the companies. Any, anyone can come in and take ownership or buy, purchase a significant amount of ownership uh, in a company at any time. So this brings us to the end of this video. I look forward to seeing you on the next one where we're going to continue our final two business types. Until then, remember for questions, activities and for helping your VCE journey, then come on over to teachingbubble.com.